What I'm going over right now, guys, is really nothing new. There is a couple things we want to talk about. Um, first of all, you may be asked about the restrictions on the domain. Remember, we, we talked about this day one. So the first thing you want to look at is what values will make the denominator 0. And you can see there's a lot of different fractions, um, a lot of different things going on here, right? So just to let you guys know, you can see that there's, here's a denominator, here's a denominator. I don't want to underline them. will be too many fraction bars. Um, but if you guys can see, there's three different denominators, right? So we want to find the values that are going to make those zeros because those are undefined values. So we can say x cannot equal negative 3, negative 4. And then here, you notice that this is conveniently factored to x plus 3 and x plus 4. So I don't need to rewrite that, correct? However, I also have this as a denominator. Don't you guys agree? Mm -hmm. So therefore, I need to set that equal to 0 as well. Now again, what you guys will notice is this isn't that big of a deal. If you set this equal to 0, basically you're multiplying the denominator on both sides. So you really have the numerator equal to 0, correct? So when you solve the numerator equal to 0, does anybody see what we get here? Complex number? Yep, question. So when you go ahead and subtract and divide by 3, you get negative. Well, can you take the square root of a negative number? No, so it's going to be a complex number. So therefore, this is not a restriction on your domain. So we don't really need to worry about that. So the only restrictions on our domain right now are negative 3 and negative 4. Now what we do need to do is simplify. So we can look at the restrictions, and now we're going to go ahead and simplify. So the way that I like to simplify is just like how I taught last class period. Identify the LCD and multiply everything by the LCD. So we identify the LCD is basically just going to be the product of two denominators. x plus 3 and x plus 4. Because obviously this divides into that, and these two both divide into that. So as I multiply everything times the LCD, when you multiply this, what divides out? x plus 3. So you're just left with the x plus 4. When you multiply this, times that, what divides out? x plus 4. So you're just left with the x plus 3. And then when you multiply this times the denominator, you can see that both of them divide out, right? So you're just left with 3x squared plus 1. And now all we got to do is simplify it. And that's it. So if you multiply everything times the LCD, get rid of those extra denominators that you have. And now you just have something to simplify. So we can apply distributive property. So we have um, x plus 4 minus 2x minus 6 all over a 3x squared plus 1. And then we combine like terms. And we get a negative x minus 2 over 3x squared plus 1. Now the only thing we want to do once we have simplified it is see, see if there's been added any other constraints. And as you guys can see, the only values that make this denominator 0 would be those imaginary numbers. So my final answer on my multiple choice test would be x cannot equal negative 3 and negative 4. And that would be your simplified answer. Okay. Now, um, a lot of you guys prepared that algebra 2 method. right? You, a lot of you guys are like, oh, 